So what's the difference now between how I'm set up with my current birth certificate, no will, the normal way probably most people are, versus setting up as a, and, and in that, am I the beneficiary of a trust? And then in your system, I become a trustee. Is that the switch point? Yeah, yeah, effectively. Yeah, like you said, most people in British Columbia or around the world, uh, they're registered to their country of origin. They have a birth certificate. Um, we're administered by the public guardian and trustee. Everything's looked after. If we do or don't have a will uh, and we pass away, uh, that goes through probate in court. Um, we are the beneficiaries. So let's say, for example, what's the benefit of the Canadian criminal code? The benefit is that I should be protected from crime. The benefit is that I also may be incarcerated for crime. That crime may have hurt no one, but it may have caused an injury to the state, right? Why, why do we get a speeding ticket if we haven't hurt anybody and we're not endangering anybody? We've caused an injury to the state. So what do we do when we reverse that relation? Let's say a police officer pulls you over and he wants to give you a, a ticket. He wants to cause some joinder. Well, uh, first there's an implied trust relation. They become the authority and you become submissive to that. Uh, there's legislation that we're bound by that makes it so that that functions. If you are a foreign entity, it's a little bit more difficult. You still have to abide by the laws of the land. You know, it doesn't matter what country I'm in. I have to respect the ways of those people. But let's say I'm on my home soil. I know my ways, right? Am I gonna do something that's gonna harm myself out of my own ignorance? And if I do, whose fault is that? That's my fault. Who am I hurting me? So what happens when the state hurts itself with its own confounded laws? Um, By reversing the trust relation, other entities can't be the beneficiary and the trustee. So a government can't come to you and say, well, we're the beneficiary and we've been appointed by a will and testament as the beneficiary of your estate, but we're still gonna try to make rules for you, right? It's a very sticky spot. As the trustee, I'm not allowed to be the beneficiary of my estate. And the beautiful part about that is it means my life is in service. It means that I get to enjoy my home. It means that I get to enjoy the works that I create in my own life. But it's not for me. It's for the world. And nobody else can tell me how to do that. Current system says we can tell you how to do that. And you are the beneficiary of your own work. It's yours. And because it's yours, you're going to have to be taxed on it and you're going to have to pay for all of that stuff that you own. Well, I still own everything as a trustee. But who's it entrusted to? What do we, what do we really do with everything that we hold in trust? Do we hold it for another person? Do we hold it for our children? Do we hold it for the future? It's a fascinating concept that is not commonly looked at in society. And I can't, I can't necessarily teach everybody what that means to them, but I can make them think. And that's what I've had to do. For me, it means that everything that I do in my life is for my children and future generations. And I think that's the truest statement. Everything that I create in my life is for those that will take it. And I don't want to sell it to them. I want to give myself to the world. A lot of people would say you can't do that. I think barter is illegal in British Columbia, isn't it? You're supposed to pay tax. If I trade you a pencil and you trade me a pen, we're supposed to pay tax on those things? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people don't know. But, but, but let me just understand this in terms of the switching of the trust. Isn't there a third? There's trustee beneficiary. And isn't there a third role in there? Uh, not really. No, somebody's either the trustee of something and somebody else is the beneficiary of it. So Charles Holmes used to speak about those and he, he mentioned a third role. I'd be curious. Hmm. I thought they, they always came together in terms of the three. Trustee. Third party interloper? <laughs> no. Um, 
it's a blank right now, but maybe it'll come up later. Uh, so you're in what you're doing, you're switching them around. And how do, how do you sort of gain, whether is it jurisdiction or how does it, you've put your charter higher in terms of the galactic order, right? That's how mm -hmm. you're, that's how you're sort of jumping, not being part of their charter. Like how, how do you distinguish between not being part of the Vatican and the crown charter without, let's say being killed or something like that? Like aren't they, they don't want people to know about this, right? Like this is, this is the big um, illusion that they're carrying forward, that they have jurisdiction because they claim that they have a higher authority. Isn't that it? Yes. It's like uh, first claim, best claim. So the first claim, it would be like the papal bulls of Unum Sanctum from the Vatican that said they chartered dominion over the world and it's gone unchallenged. Mm. Um, there are certain orders that recognize it and find their own autonomy in it, but it's a very difficult one because how do you create a charter that supersedes that? So you need a better claim. That's the first claim, right? But a better claim says there is no one between you and divinity. There is no one between you and God or creation or creator or however you want to look at it, spirit, whatever it is for you. And nobody can tell you what that is, right? And a lot of people have tried. So there's all these different factions of religion all over the world, but it's, it's to each independent person to find that way. Maybe they believe in Christ, right? Maybe they believe in, in Muhammad. I don't know. And those are very conflictive points for a lot of people. Um, my survey says that you can't tell me what my truth is eff effectively. And my survey goes exopolitical. It, it recognizes higher order life forms. So in my system, I'm a level six higher order life form. I'm self-aware. Uh, there are other self-aware life forms on earth. And if you want to think about it in terms of dreams, that's how I like to think of it. So like, does a dog dream? You ever watch a dog have a dream? You know, it's dreaming. Everything dreams. So it has its own self-awareness, right? And no one can take that away from you. When, when the sleeper awakes, they are eternally awake. And there are those that want you to go back to sleep. So it's in the redemption of your own trust and the formation of a higher survey. So mine goes on a galactic level to a celestial level, to a planetary level. If you wanna look at what's done on earth in terms of law, they don't start at the center or in a quadrant of the Milky Way galaxy. They, their survey starts with, well, what country are you born in? What's your, what's your nation or your, your origin, right? What's your national origin? Uh, where were you born? What's your name? What's your family name? Uh, what's your address, right? How should I address you? Um, if somebody doesn't own land or if somebody doesn't have a fixed address, it can become increasingly difficult for them to exist in the world. But that's because somebody else says you need that. Um, your birth certificate is represented inside of a system that you didn't create, right? We were born into it. If you wanted to exit that system, you got to exit it into something. Otherwise, uh, we talked about this before, the whole free man on the land thing. You kind of create a vacuum around yourself. So that's, uh, that's not taking a higher survey or creating a new trust relation. It's trying to run away. When you refer to level six, uh, which codification system are you using? Right. So that's an example of another survey. So I, I'd have to get into that in another one. But okay. um, effectively, there's different levels of life. Let's look at an amoeba, right? Let's look at a plankton. Let's look at a fish. Let's look at a dolphin. Let's look at a, let's look at a horse or a dog. Now let's look at a human. Now let's look at different levels of awareness that can exist in a human. How aware is someone of themselves? How aware is someone of their spirit, right? or of their dreams. And the more whole that somebody can become, the higher their awareness goes to the point where they can't disregard certain portions of their consciousness. 
And so the redemption of a trust number, the redemption of that, the reversal of a trust relation doesn't just say, I'm sticking my foot in the ground or drawing a line in the sand. It says, I am aware of something. I'm aware of something in myself that is bigger than me. And it says, everything that I do in my life is for my people, right? It's for my family. It's for my friends. It's for people that I don't even know yet. And it's the world that I want to leave to them. And it's the world that I know in my heart. And so when I awaken to this higher awareness, and when we all awaken to this higher awareness, um, it can be jarring. It can be a jarring experience to dis discover who you are. And I, I, I would think it a tragedy to go through life and then wake up one day and say, oh, my, I've wasted my time. I haven't pursued my passions. I pursued a paycheck. I, I ran on a treadmill that I was given and told to do. But where, what have I done with myself? You know, where have I found meaning? And uh, so, yeah, in the reversal of the trust relation, it says I'm in charge now. And it's, it's a funny thing. I had this happen years ago. My, uh, my parents said, well, we're going away for the weekend and we're going to hire somebody to look after the place. Uh, and, you know, we don't really trust you. And uh, I said, well, how do you know that you don't trust me? He said, well, we've never trusted you before to go away for the weekend. And I said, well, how do you know you can trust me unless you're willing to, right? And it made my, it made my dad think, what is, uh, you know, hmm, it's a good point. How do we know if we can, if we never have? And how do you know that you can trust yourself if you never have? And that's a very scary point. So a lot of people say, ah, that's a scary awakening. Like, I don't know if I can trust myself. What survey do I use? How do I take stock of my life and of who I am? unless there's somebody to show it to me, right? And so we have to become a reflection to the world and the world has to become a reflection to us. And uh, it's a process of self-discovery is what it is, you know, and for everybody it's different. So how, how like we're coming, I think to the end of this part of this, hmm. but just a quick ask a question in terms of how does one create that trust? How does one do it? Let's say in terms of the paperwork or the license, like how, how does one, how does one do it? I just want to do it. Well, like a license is fascinating. Um, you're not asking for a license. Uh, what you're doing is you're doing a declaration. You're setting forward a notice. Like you can't contest a, a will of a foreign jurisdiction. And if I say all of you people watching this are the beneficiaries of my estate, I am the trustee of it. You want to come to my house and eat my food? That's fine. You know? but I'm going to be making the rules on that. You can't rob me and think that's okay because you're the beneficiary, right? Um, I make the rules and the rules are based on what's better for everybody. It's not just for me. It's for other people. If I, if somebody comes and they sit and they clean out my refrigerator and they eat a ton, it's probably not healthy for them. Right. And then you go, I'm not just going to penalize them. I'm probably going to say, we need to have a conversation. Right? <laughs> this is, you know, you've eaten 15,000 calories today and I don't see this going well for you. Um. <laughs> I, I mean, you're still in terms, of, okay, the trustee makes the rules, but in terms of, let's say, documentation, mm -hmm. actual process of, of doing what you're talking about, mm -hmm. what is that? Well, it starts off as a charter with a survey. It forms a trust. And then the trust is administered through the will and testament of the individual. So the system is very straightforward. The system is the same legal structure that has always existed, whether it's, well, any religion, right? It starts off with a doctrine. It starts off with a trust. It creates a, a state, the E state, right? The etheric state of your being, which you have to populate with who and what you are. And so that's done through your will, which is a living document. It's a living will. I can change it, right? I can change my will as I move through time, as current circumstances present themselves to me. And I take bearing in those circumstances, right? I can change my will. If we're in a time of peace or if we're in a time of war, my will might be different, right? I might be in a state of protection, but I might also then be in another situation, be in a state of growth. 
and be more giving because I have more. Um, the formation of that process, I use Eucadia for that because it's the one that makes the most sense to me. And it has the highest possible survey and highest possible charter that I can find that, that actually aligns with my belief structure, which is fascinating. How did, I, how did I find this stuff? And it aligns with what I believe. I didn't have to say, okay, this fits. I'm going to jump on this bandwagon. And I got into it. And uh, a, a lot of it came through dreams, which is fascinating. And uh, it's about being a guardian. So being a trustee and a guardian of yourself and of your will and testament and of your way. Um, and finding a system that works for you to do that. Okay, we'll explore this deeper in some other videos. Thank you very much for uh, explaining something that could be at the, uh, I guess, the highest leverage point of switching into sovereignty.